responsibility at either end. Paraphrasing a quip made by former U.S. Uh, President Ronald Reagan during his 1965 campaign for governor of California, which he compared to government to a baby. Uh, the id is responsible for our basic drives. Knows no judgments of value, no good and evil, no morality. Instinctual cathexes, sinking discharge. That, in our view, is all there is in the id. It is regarded as the great reservoir of libido. The instinctive drive to create, the life instincts that are crucial to pleasurable survival. Alongside the life instincts came the death instincts, the death drive which Freud articulated relatively late in his career, and the hypothesis of a death instinct, the task of which is to lead organic life back into the inanimate state. For Freud, the death instinct would thus seem to express itself, though probably only in part as an instinct of destruction directed against the external world and other organisms. organisms. person originally includes all the instinctual impulses, the destructive instinct to his will, as Eros, or the life instincts, and Eros is an allusion to the Greek goddess of uh, chaos. Uh, the ego acts according to the reality principle, i.e. it seeks to please the its drive in realistic ways that will benefit in the long term rather than bringing grief. At the same time, Freud concedes that as the ego attempts to mediate between it and reality, it is often obligated to cloak the UCS, unconscious commands of the id, with its own pre-conscious rationalizations, to conceal the id's conflicts with reality, to profess to be taking notice of reality even when the id has remained rigid and unyielding. The ego compromises that organized part of the personality structure that includes defensive, perceptual, intellectual, cognitive, and ex uh, executive functions. Conscious awareness resides in the ego, although not all of the operations of the ego are conscious. Originally, uh, Freud used the word ego to make a sense of self, but later revised it to mean a set of psychic functions such as judgment, tolerance, reality testing, control, planning, defense, synthesis of information, intellectual functioning, and memory. The ego separates out what is real. It helps us to organize our thoughts and make sense of them and, and the world around us. The ego is that part of the id which has been modified by the direct influence of the external world. The ego represents what may be called reason common sense. In contrast to the id, which contains the passions in its relation in its relation to the id, it is like a man on horseback who has to hold and check the superior strength of the horse with this difference that the rider tries to do so with his own strength, while the ego uses borrowed forces. Still worse, it serves three severe masters, the external world, the super ego, and the id. Its task is to find a balance between primitive drives and reality while satisfying the id and superego. Its main concern is with the individual's safety and allows some of the id's desires to be expressed, but only when consequences of these actions are marginal. Thus the ego, driven by the id, confined by the superego, repulsed by reality, struggles in bringing about harmony among the forces and influences working in and upon it, and readily breaks out in anxiety, realistic anxiety regarding the external world, moral anxiety regarding the superego, and neurotic anxiety regarding regarding the strength of the passions in the id. It has to do its best to suit all three, thus is constantly feeling him by the danger of causing discontent on two other sides. It is said, however, that the ego seems to be more loyal to the id, preferring to gloss over the finer details of reality to minif minimize conflicts while pretending to have a regard for reality. But the superego is constantly watching every one of the ego's moves and punishes it with feelings of guilt, anxiety, and inferiority. To overcome this ego, or this, the ego employs defense mechanisms. The defense mechanisms are not done so directly or consciously. They lessen the tension by covering up our impulses that are threatening. So it's like, uh, justification. Ego defense mechanisms are often used by the ego when in behavior conflicts with reality and either social society's morals, norms, and taboos or the individual's expectations as a result of the internal internalization of these morals, norms, and their taboos.
not sharply separate from the id, its lower portion merges into it, but the repressed merges into the id as well, and is merely a part of it. The repressed is only cut off sharply from the ego by the resistances of repression. It can communicate with the ego through the id. Models are ugly. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> 